Greenfield has always pushed PC hardware, be it dynamic destruction, massive 64 plus online multiplayer warfields, infantry tanks, choppers and jets, all with high end graphics, high resolutions and even higher frame rates. Battlefield 6 is no different. DICE, Frostbite Engine and the team have ramped up those dials, pushing all of these aspects to the extreme with gorgeous high octane action across a plethora of dangerous but detailed maps. But this is not a simple feat to achieve, as it requires hardware that can meet those demands, and GPUs are at the centre of that. For this video, we have a clear focus. How can you achieve the 100 plus FPS high quality low latency gaming that Battlefield 6 demands? Using a selection of GPUs from within Inno3D's latest range of Nvidia RTX 50 series cards, which aim to push the game to reach those high targets as intended, across a selection of price and performance points. Now we will use three cards available within Inno3D's range and each card comprises a sleek metallic design engineered around power and cooling efficiency as a focus to deliver high frame rates and low temperatures which our tests will validate. Starting with the entry level RTX 5060 GPU aimed at 1080p gaming that can push high quality graphics including the latest RTX ray trace visuals, deep learning super sampling, transformer model reconstruction and, exclusive to the 50 series cards, up to 4 times multi frame generation for increased refresh rates alongside low latency with RTX Reflex. Next we have the middleweight in the RTX 5070 which offers all the same feature set as that 5060 and high refresh rates for 1440p gaming. Final we have the high end RTX 5080 which again enables those dials to be turned up even higher all at the same super fast frame rates and crisp 4k resolutions to offer the premium gaming experience. Now all GPUs are tested across the same specification of machine to ensure that only the GPU is being maxed out here and not being hamstrung by the CPU, which is all visualized on screen. As a multiplayer first and foremost, this is our focus and where we will remain for these tests and we will cover the gamut of the settings needed, the frame times, the input latency and just how cool those Inno 3D GPUs remain in action. The test will show how the game and card scale so you can understand the differences in performance. So let's start with our entry level RTX 5060 and let battle commence. First things first, what are the settings and baseline for these tests? Well, Battlefield 6 uses a long running Frostbite engine which supports physically based lighting, dynamic destruction, ray tracing and the full suite of RTX features including deep learning super sampling, transformer model AA and reconstruction, reflex low latency which is a key ingredient for DLSS 4 times MFG multi frame generation which is only available on these new cards and is enabled by default once MFG is turned on, which ensures that that rendering pipeline is streamlined to ensure every click is as fast as possible to the screen, due to the required delay frame generation necessitates within that rendering pipeline. Now as noted for the RTX 5060, we will remain at 1920 by 1080p resolutions and our settings will not change with or without MFG enabled across all three GPUs. So let's start with that. Now overkill is the top setting and the cost versus reward is too high for the RTX 5060 but the impact is small as I can demonstrate here, largely reducing global illumination bounce and ambient occlusion quality from a super sampled screen space GI and ambient occlusion SSGI to a lower quality version in ground truth AO. Dropping this down to ultra has a minuscule impact on the visual quality but a drastic increase to performance now gaining over 38% on those frame times which is instantly felt moving 44 FPS to 61. But with DLSS 4, we can improve this further. Enabling DLSS quality mode, we reduce the base rendering resolution to 1280 by 720p. But this is reconstructed back using the RTX tensor cores to that same 1920 by 1080 per frame, offering a largely indistinguishable image quality from native 1080p, but at a near 20% further increase to performance, now hitting 73 FPS in this shot. These settings alone are enough to run the game between 55 and 95 FPS, offering a responsive experience across this stressful and representative example of real gameplay action. We average at 65.53 FPS. Now testing these settings, we need to validate the impact Reflex has on latency. Starting with Reflex disabled, we get an average latency of 47.37 milliseconds, which is still fast, 
but higher frame rates will decrease this even further, as will enabling reflex, which does not improve frame times or performance, but it does improve latency. Now we average 41.92 milliseconds, a faster response, which offers a decent 5 to 6 milliseconds reduction to control response. Reflex offers an approximate 11% improvement here, but with frame generation on, we will increase that baseline to compensate for the extra frame that engine needs to render ahead to enable the RTX cards to generate the one in between. Improving on this and ensuring we remain above that 144 FPS minimum we desire is where MFG comes in. With two, three or four times being selectable from the menu, we can dial in that required level of interpolation to ensure we align with our panel's refresh and minimize latency and judder. Once enabled, reflex latency with boost is automatically enabled, helping us to reduce that latency cost just described. At two times MFG minimum, we now operate on average 114.2 and only take a small hit to input latency, on average 56.54 milliseconds, less than 10 milliseconds cost for almost two times the frame rate. If we need to achieve even higher targets, we can enable four times MFG, which will push us into the high 200s now with a small increase of around eight milliseconds, netting us a 65.27 millisecond latency cost for a 221.6 FPS average. And these are the exact same settings, resolution and GPU we started this test with, but now we average around 3.2 times faster refresh rates, which makes our game much smoother with less visual judder and we align or exceed our chosen screen's output panel refresh, all the while keeping our 5060 GPU under 56 degrees Celsius, no matter how fast we decide to play. Next, the middleweight champion in the excellent Inno 3D Twin X2 overclocked RTX 5070. It takes everything we've just discussed and dials up the resolution by 77% to 2560 by 1440. With the choice now, we could decide to creep up those settings if so desired. This model keeps that same sleek space efficient design, but ups the ante with 6144 CUDA cores and 12GB of GDR7 memory, but remains a compact GPU. But here though, we follow the exact same principle as before, comparing 1080p DLSS quality to 1440p DLSS quality without any frame generation enabled, and now we can achieve even better performance and latency numbers with an even sharper and more detailed image, averaging just over 144 FPS during this multiplayer map. Now, we cannot align moment to moment gameplay exactly, but this already offers a huge increase in both visual quality, input latency, and out of the box performance by over two times, and we have not even enabled MFG as yet. We see similar increases to that input latency as before, although we are already lower than the RTX 5060 as a baseline now, averaging 33 milliseconds without reflex enabled, which would be around 30 milliseconds with reflex on. Once we max this out to 4 times MFG, we can see a minor increase to that, hovering below the 5060 without MFG at 41.7 milliseconds, which is an excellent level. But our frame times now target north of 300 FPS, averaging 341.4 across these runs, offering the same benefits as before, just much sharper, faster and even more responsive and cool with an average GPU temperature of 62 degrees Fahrenheit due to their twin removable fans, aluminium chassis and large copper base heatsink, even at almost two times the power wattage use of the RTX 5060. Finally, the big boy in the RTX 5080 delivers the same big step up as before, taking that 1440p ultra setting base and now pushing to 4K via DLSS quality. As with the rest of the Inno 3D range, the 5080 models combine sheer power with precision engineering, a clean minimal design built to stay cool even under 4K loads. Another 2.25 pixel output increase and on a large 4K screen, the clarity is apparent from the off. But we still manage to deliver a high refresh presentation using those same ultra settings, no multi-frame generation required. We average just over 123.5 FPS during this large scale close quarter skirmish, meaning we could happily cap the game at 4K 120 and enjoy a silky smooth high refresh experience all the while averaging less than 30 milliseconds input latency, even without reflex enabled at 29.7, by far the best way to play Battlefield 6, with potentially another 2-3 milliseconds less with reflex enabled. However, 
Should you require an even faster experience, you could choose to enable two, three, or four times MFG, which could push those average refresh rates up to 400 FPS levels, which far exceed most maximum refresh rates on the market. Now, in this same stressful combat battle on the Cairo map, we average 324.9 FPS at these top end high resolution settings, all the while remaining cool at less than 58 degrees Celsius even in the thick of battle and responsive with reflex helping the game deliver a swift 41.19 millisecond average input latency which exceeds where we started this video on the RTX 5060 being over four times the resolution and even faster input latency and refresh rates. Now, the thorough testing carried out here, isolating only the GPU as the Delta equation, clearly demonstrates that the Inno 3D NVIDIA RTX 50 series cards tested can deliver high quality action, fast frame rates across a range of success, price and performance points. From the final results covered here, the RTX 5070 offers the best balance of power and performance, with it pipping the RTX 5080 in the maximum frame rate stakes, albeit at much lower resolutions. In this battle, of the RTX 50 series GPUs. We'd like to thank Inno3D for sending us a selection of their 50 series cards for these tests, and you can view their full range of RTX 50 series cards via the link in the description down below, which has a card and performance target for every customer and base. And that draws an end to the video of all things PC, Battlefield 6, and technology related.